I see that you are coming really from uh, all over the world, from uh, Canada, Mexico to Taiwan, Philippines, Bangladesh, and of course Europe and so on. So really a great uh, welcome. Um, Anne's already introduced me, so um, I'm not coming back on that. I just would like to say that, as you see on, on, the, on the first slide, uh, the, the aim of my presentation it is to, to describe a triple business approach enabling to better succeed with energy efficiency in industry. So this uh, triple business approach is uh, systemic, customized, and uh, strategic, and uh, we will go through these uh, concepts uh, during the, the presentation, of course. Uh, this is the outline of uh, my presentation. So very briefly describe the context of, of the subject, and then a first part dedicated to understanding investment behavior, because if we understand this investment behavior, then we will uh, be able to better influence it. And this is the, the aim of the third part of this presentation. And then we will come to uh, a conclusion. Uh, uh, the first part, as I just said, is the, the context of this presentation. Why do we need to increase uh, uh, the way we, or to increase our success with uh, energy efficiency uh, in, uh, in organizations uh, regarding investment? Uh, and uh, as you see on this slide, which was presented uh, in Brussels a few days ago by Philippe Benoit from uh, IEA, uh, you see the, the bars, industry, transport, power generation, and uh, buildings. The, the full color bars, uh, the, the, full, the, the full color bars part, uh, uh, indicates the, the realized energy efficiency potential assessed until 2035. But you say that the biggest part of the, the bars, the, the shaded uh, uh, part, is the, the unrealized energy efficiency potential. And so the question is, a huge energy efficiency potential remains untapped according to the, the predictions, and, and how can we, can we overcome that? We, we have also noticed, or let's say research has noticed, that the common engineers uh, technico-economic approach, uh, meaning I identify energy savings, then I translate these energy savings into financial savings, and then if uh, financial savings are interesting, it will uh, uh, translate into an investment decision. Actually, this approach does not work or does not work sufficiently. And this is the context of, of this presentation. This is the, 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 the situation we will try to, to go through and, and uh, improve. So first part of the presentation, as I, as I said, is uh, understanding investment behavior. This is another common view in the field. And this common view is to say that profitability is the key. So I will do a capital, or the investor will uh, perform a capital budgeting analysis, and then if there's profitability, uh, sufficient profitability, uh, investment decision will be uh, will be made, and the investment will be chosen. And I, I actually, again, this uh, this common common view on investment decision making doesn't work. It is not observed in the reality. As you see, as you see here on this slide, uh, this slide is showing the results of uh, two research. One is I, I've made it myself, and another one was made in in France. And uh, I've interviewed financial, manager, financial managers in France, uh, in uh, Switzerland, excuse me, and uh, I've asked them, do you agree with the following sentences? The first sentence is, profitability of an investment is not sufficient to entail a positive decision. And uh, 37 out of 44 Swiss managers said, yes, I agree with this sentence, it is not sufficient, and 15 out of 17 uh, managers, finance managers in France. The second sentence uh, is, a project can be realized even if it is not profitable. And you see that uh, 10, uh, 10 financial managers out of 17 uh, did agree with this sentence. And uh, 
the third sentence uh, shown here said, above all, a project must contribute to the realization of the company's strategic goals. And as you can see, uh, a huge majority of the finance managers interviewed did agree with this sentence. Therefore, uh, we can say that there's something more important that, than, uh, than the financial logic. And this is why I'm, I'm now showing you a model, a, an investment decision-making model I have developed based on a, a, a huge uh, research of the, lit, of the literature. And this uh, decision-making model is saying that investment decision-making in organizations is the result of a dynamic process influenced by internal and external context of this process, the actors involved, and investment characteristics. It's more clearly uh, described in the, the, this slide where you see this investment process with several uh, steps, uh, starting with the initial idea and then the diagnosis and then the buildup of solutions, then the evaluation and choice uh, phases, and finally the implementation. Then you have the internal context, uh, meaning the organizational factors, where you can find the strategy of a company, the culture, management systems the external context with the environmental factors such as legislation, uh, energy prices, uh, competitors uh, move, and so on. Then you have the actors uh, involved in this investment process. And uh, finally, the, um, finally, the investment characteristics. So I've, I've most worked on investment characteristics in my own research. Investment characteristics are, are two, two, two folds. First, the scope. So the scope is what is the aim of an investment, for instance, to replace existing equipment to increase production capacity, or it, it can be an investment in diversification. And the other aspect of investment characteristics are the analytical characteristics. And this is something which uh, is, is useful to, to, to study, uh, to examine when you, when you look at uh, an investment project. Uh, and this refers to what is the stimulus? Is it negative or positive? Uh, is it an uncertainty attached to this uh, investment project? What about the complexity? Are the solutions internal and ready-made? Or should we uh, ask external people to build something for us? What is the impact on the organization? What is the duration of the project? What is the interconnectedness? And this relates to the relationship of the project with other issues and projects in a company. And finally, is the action controllable? So what will be effectively the result of my project? And it's always very interesting to look at these, uh, at these aspects. So scope and the analytical characteristics of an investment determine is, uh, its strategic character, which I've, uh, I've suggested the name, uh, the, the name strategicity to, 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 to be shorter. And actually, the, the, all these aspects and the strategicity of an investment uh, influence many things. It, it, it influenced the procedure applied the type of analysis applied, the capital budgeting tools used, the profitability requirements, because, and this is very important to, to notice, if an investment is strategic, then sometimes profitability requirements will be lower. Um, so this is tremendously important. Also, the steps an investment process has to follow, the resort to external financing, and finally, the champion. If an investment is perceived as strategic, the champion will be a, a powerful one. And it's a, it's a project not considered as, as interesting, as strategic, as important. Then the champion will, will have low power. Then coming to the actors. Uh, actors, uh, you, you have two, two, uh, two views on, on actors. One is to say that there is a political dimension of decision making. And this is obvious. Key managers impose their choices or their non-choices directly on decisions or indirectly through corporate culture and through strategy and routines definition. And it has been noticed by, by research 
then highest power always is uh, within a dominant coalition of heavyweight functions. And these are the production, sales and marketing, and finance functions. And so you, you notice that uh, energy management function is not in the highest power uh, functions, which of course you, you already knew. But the, then the question is, how can I get in touch with these people and convince them? The other dimension of, uh, of, uh, of actor study is the co cognitive dimension of decision making. Actors and actors in the field of organization behavior are groups or individuals, so both. Actors have mindsets and cognitive filters. And so you need to, to understand these filters and to understand who is in front of you to, to, to try to overcome these filters. And this is really important to remember. And it, it can be summarized by the, 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 these filters can be summarized by the, the sentence. I think it's a very powerful sentence saying, I see it when I believe it. And I suppose you all and we all are used more to, to, to the, the, the other way around, which is, I believe it when I see it. But actually, if you don't believe it, you, you are not going to see it. And so uh, I think it's interesting to remember that. This is a nice way to show how, how we have filters. In that case, it's a little Eskimo boy, and he's asking, what is a corner? Because uh, he's living in a round uh, environment, and so he, he doesn't know what is a corner. And uh, this is another interesting uh, way to present uh, filters and how we are influenced by our own background. Uh, this is the concept of uh, interacting cultural spheres of influence. And it says that we, there are six spheres of influence, and every one of us is influenced unconsciously by this. And uh, especially in the field of energy efficiency, three uh, spheres are very powerful, and these are the company culture, the professional culture, and the functional culture. So it, it, it enables to understand, to better understand, because we've all noticed that in our professional life, but, I mean, uh, a lawyer will not uh, think and speak and understand things as, a, as the finance manager or as a marketing and sales uh, person and so on. So, and company culture is powerful as well. So we need to remember these filters. And to summarize the first part, you have here two research findings on which the rest of the presentation is based. Research finding one is, is saying that financial logic is not decisive and strategic logic is more important in business investment choices. And research finding two uh, says that a huge diversity is observed between company situation and behaviors, even within the same industry. So, Based on the on these uh, on, on part one on this uh, part dedicated to better understanding uh, investment behavior in organizations, we can now start part two, which is dedicated to influencing investment behavior. And uh, so, as an introduction, I'd like to 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 say that we do need to switch approach. Uh, the common energy savings approach based on the financial logic, as I just uh, tried to, to show you, does not work or is insufficient. Organizations need to switch from a commodity view of energy based on kilowatt hour consumption to a strategic view of energy services. And uh, what is absolutely necessary and too, too, too often forgotten is to bridge energy efficiency and operational efficiency. And then uh, we now uh, arrive to the, the heart of the presentation, since it is uh, dedicated to how to succeed with energy efficiency in industry. And so now I will present you uh, three approaches, or a triple business management approach, uh, which uh, can uh, help positively influence firms' energy efficiency investment behavior. So uh, the first one is a systemic approach, and this means develop an energy efficiency culture at the organizational level through uh, thanks to energy management. The second approach is uh, labeled customized, 
this means to take into account uh, firm's diversity by trying to better know which company you have in or companies or firms you have in front of you. And uh, then the third approach is uh, strategic. Make it strategic, meaning make these investments strategic so that they can win the, the competition. The first approach uh, is the systemic approach. And systemic approach means energy management, implementing energy management. Uh, there are several definitions of energy management. I suggest here to use the definition uh, energy management is the process of organizational, human, and technical actions enabling organizations to use energy in a more efficient way and to reduce energy consumption in a profitable and durable way. Uh, managing is a word is a word that is uh, often used and and very rarely defined. So um, and I've I've gone through different uh, business management books to to look for a definition. So I think the most focused definition is to say that managing means organizing with a goal. And then we can also say uh, in more detail that managing means for a particular activity or process. Planning, organizing, choosing, acting, and reacting according to different time horizons and different goals. It is important to uh, remember that managing is a different. Also, measuring is indispensable. It is only one aspect of managing. To be successful, energy management uh, must absolutely integrate three dimensions. Uh, of course, the technical. This is shown on the diagram on the left, uh, on the right, on the slide, and you see that, of course, there is a technical dimension, which is normal when you speak about uh, energy or, or uh, energy services, but also the human, the human dimension, and then the organizational dimension, um, including the strategic aspects, financial aspects, culture but also information, the data collection, data storage, and uh, all the management systems. You know certainly that uh, since uh, June uh, 2011, uh, there's a methodology defined by ISO 50001 based on the Continuous Improvement Methodology Plan, Do, Check, uh, Check Act. And uh, energy management has, has, has demonstrated to, to be a very powerful tool in, in, in any organization. So energy consumption is, is, is going down. But actually, energy management is low in most organizations. Uh, I have developed a simplified energy management audit uh, in 19 questions. Uh, with a maximum score of 22 points. You see that on the, the right uh, side of, of the slide. And um, so it's, the questions are, are, are taking, uh, including the m most important aspect of energy management based on Energy Star and based, and based on um, ISO 50001. And actually, most companies uh, interviewed get a score below 10 out of 22 although a wild diversity a wide uh, diversity is observed but uh, it's an interesting uh, tool to to use this uh, simplified energy management audit because uh, it may it, it shows where there is room for improvement and uh, if we relate um, uh, this uh, uh, why energy why developing energy management is important uh, to, to our uh, decision-making model. Uh, we see that uh, energy management is a tool to increase visibility of energy issues and to create buy-in for energy projects in organizations because it will act, uh, it, it will have a positive impact on the internal context uh, of the decision-making process on the actors involved because they will raise the interest uh, towards energy services. And it has also an influence on the diagnostic step of the investment process because uh, it will, with the right argumentation, it will raise the strategicity of uh, energy efficiency investment projects. 
we, we arrive now uh, uh, to the second approach uh, to, to, to positively influence uh, in investment, uh, energy efficiency investment decision making. And so it is a customized uh, approach. Uh, the customized approach is based on a very interesting um, uh, uh, analytical tool. It's uh, called the nine block business model analysis. It's now very famous around the world in business management circles. It has been developed by two uh, Swiss professors. One is uh, Alexander Osterwalder from uh, University of St. Gallen, and the other one is, uh, is uh, Yves Pigneur from University of Lausanne. And as you see, um, you have nine blocks. At the center, it's a number two, you have the value proposal. And on the, on the right of the, of the value proposal, you have your customer and how you bring your value proposal to your, to your customer. And on the left side of the, of the value proposal, you have the key activities, key resources, and key uh, partners uh, which you need upstream to develop your uh, value proposal. And below, you have the, the, the cost and the, the income. So the idea to why am I showing you that? It's because as, as, I, as I, I mentioned before, you need to try to understand what is your customer, what is the company, or it can be your company or a company you would like to convince, what is this company doing? Because then you will find your potential contribution or potential energy services contribution to this uh, business model and to their uh, activity. So I will... Uh, briefly develop uh, the most important um, aspects and most important blocks of this, um, uh, this um, nine block analysis. So the, the, the most important block is the customer segment. Uh, it is really at the, at the heart of any business model. Uh, customer segments defines groups of people or of organizations which you want to reach and to convince, and these are your targets. And it is useful to group them in segments according to the needs, behaviors, characteristics to better serve, to better serve them. Then these customers, you will propose a value of uh, pr products and services, a combination of, of, of products and services, which will form your value proposal. And uh, a value proposal is a very, a very uh, subtle uh, concept. Uh, think of a car. You have two examples on this uh, slide. Um, what do you expect from a car? You can expect actually many things. Normally, the basic use is to, to go from point one to, to point two. But actually, some some of you will be will be interested by 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 uh, the power of the car, by the brand, by services attached to to the maintenance, by by the the, the color, by the CO2 emissions, by uh, fuel uh, fuel use, and so on and so on. So actually, you have many many attributes attached to a car, and these attributes form the value proposal. So value proposal, to, to, to better uh, describe this concept, which is really a subtle concept, but very interesting, uh, uh, which value do we bring to our customer? Which problem do we help him solve? Which needs do we answer to? Which combinations of products and services do we propose to each customer segment? Uh, so these are the questions you uh, have to answer when you try to develop a value proposal. But you, also can, you can also um, develop these questions to understand the company uh, you would like to, to communicate with or you would like to convince uh, for an energy efficiency project. So the answers to these questions are many. Uh, you see it can be novelty, performance, customization, design, brand or status, cost reduction, risk reduction, convenience, price, accessibility, and many others which, is not, which are not listed here. Uh, to to, to, um, to uh, develop this uh, value proposal, you need key resources. And these are, you certainly are familiar with resources. You have physical, human, financial, organizational, technological, and also branding or reputation or image uh, resources. 
the question is, are energy and energy services uh, considered as, a, as key resources in, in organizations? And I suppose you will agree with me that uh, too often uh, the answer is no, it's not considered as, as key resources, and we have to change that. Then you also need some uh, key activities to, to, to build up the value proposal. And uh, these are also production. Uh, this is, these are examples because, OK, yes, we know about production, distribution, R&D, marketing. But you also have a problem uh, solving. You can have also a, 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 an activity which could be develop customer loyalty, or maintenance, or logistics. So activities are different for any organization. And also, you, you don't need just to analyze uh, activities, but also sub-activities. And uh, it can be at the level of, of a whole organization or at the level of a production process. And so when you look at, the, at these uh, business model, when you make this exercise of uh, an analyzing a business model of a company, uh, you understand that, of course, there are many, many different areas where uh, 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 where investment can be investments can be made, and uh, strategic investment win the com competition for the time and energy of powerful managers and for financial resources. So you do need not to think in terms of energy savings, but to think in terms of what can be my contribution to this business model of this company, and then because. We are all creative people, uh, and then you find answers. So the nine, to why a customer a customized approach in summary, the nine block analysis uh, is a tool to better understand uh, an organization's business model and its value creation process. And it's a tool to better understand also, as I just said, uh, how energy, contrib uh, energy service services can contribute to this value creation. And uh, a, a tool to, 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 which can be combined with the nine block analysis is the value chain. It's another uh, uh, analysis, actually, which is somehow included in the nine block analysis. And it is a tool to, 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 which, help to, which help better identify the different activities and sub-activities of a company. As it said here, the value chain disaggregates a firm into its strategically relevant activities in order to understand the behavior of costs and the existing and potential sources of differentiation. So with that, I come to the third uh, business approach uh, to uh, positively influence uh, investment, energy efficiency investment decision making, and it is a strategic uh, uh, approach. This approach, which I've been working on for, for several years now, is uh, connected to the, the new report uh, which w was uh, issued by an uh, international energy agency in, in September. And this report is uh, called uh, Capturing, uh, or entitled Capturing the Multiple Benefits of Energy Efficiency. Uh, I'm focusing more on the competitiveness benefits. And uh, I've also tried to operationalize, operationalize uh, this uh, concept of, uh, of, of non-energy benefits and how we can better argue, build an argumentation uh, around that. So what, what does it mean strategic? Uh, again, you can uh, look through the literature, and you, you, you will find thousands of pages, and, and, and it is difficult to find a definition. I, I was really surprised. So I, I, I come up with my own definition. An investment is strategic if it contributes to create, maintain, or develop a sustainable competitive advantage. Then, of course, what is a, competitive, uh, a sustainable competitive advantage? Competitive advantage is a three-dimensional concept from the three interrelated uh, constituents, value, cost, and risks. And so you have now understood that uh, by value here, we refer to the value proposal of the business model. Um, 
I think it's interesting to read this sentence uh, by Michael Porter, wh who developed the concept uh, 30 years ago. But competitive advantage cannot be understood by looking at a firm as a whole. It stems from the many discrete activities a firm performs in designing, producing, marketing, delivering, and supporting its products. Its product. Each of, the, of these activities can contribute to a firm's relative cost position and create a basis for differentiation. And so this is why, this is why you will try to, to, to understand the many discrete activities with the help of the value chain uh, analytical tool. And you will try to understand uh, the contribution of energy services to these activities. And you will see, you will, you will realize that you have a very high contribution of energy services to many activities. So for many companies, strategic advantage is based on a superior value stemming from providing unique benefits and not for offering lower prices. This is also why uh, 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 energy cost reduction is, is very often not perceived as, as uh, interesting enough to, to, to to entail uh, a positive investment decision. And uh, as emphasized by Michael Porter, value instead of cost must be used to assess competitive position. So the three dimensions of competitive advantage based on Michael Porter and a bit uh, extended with, uh, by, by, by my, my, um, my research is first value value proposal, the value a firm is able to create and to propose to its customers. And the higher the value, the higher the sales, of course, because if it's interesting, if the product is, is, uh, is attractive, then people will buy it more and maybe will buy it at, at a higher price. Uh, and then, of course, you need to analyze the cost support to create and deliver the value proposal. and. Uh, this was the basis, the basis for the competitive advantage. But now I think we are in a world with a, a risk uh, strongly uh, increasing in many, many uh, fields. And this is why I propose to add risk as the, the third part of, the, of the, comp uh, the third dimension of competitive advantage. So uh, and these are the risks supported to create and deliver the value proposal. And if we analyze these three dimensions of competitive advantage, then we can actually measure, in a way, the strategicity of any uh, investment project and of, in our case, in, uh, any uh, energy efficiency investment project. Uh, how can, can that be translated in, in, into real terms uh, regarding an energy efficiency investment product? Uh, looking at the value proposal, it has been, you remember I said at the beginning that we, we need to try to, to, to join and to bridge energy efficiency and, and uh, operational efficiency. And then we see that uh, actually when we do that, when we, when, when we bridge these two uh, subjects, very often, thanks to an energy efficiency uh, investment project, when it is realized, uh, the quality of the product increases, uh, the reliability of a product increases, uh, security of the facilities increases, and so on and so on. This has been, uh, has been noticed in, in, in many, many cases of investment projects. Um, risk is also going down thanks to these energy efficiency uh, projects. The commercial risk. Uh, because you will not lose customers if uh, if you you have uh, you I don't know your your you have a breakdown or you you can't deliver a, pro a product in time. Uh, you have the risk of equ equipment breakdown going down thanks to uh, a new um, a new uh, energy equipment. Uh, legal risks are going down, CO2 risk, and so on. And on the cost side, of course, you have generally a reduction in energy cost. But actually, you have many other costs which are decreasing uh, thanks to an energy efficiency uh, project. You have very often, you don't need so many raw materials as before. Your maintenance costs are going down. Your equipment oversizing is going down. Employee turnover is going down because if you increase comfort and you, you, you will um, 
you and and a loyalty of of your employee uh, they will stay with you uh, longer uh, so you have many many costs going down and actually in many cases the energy uh, uh, energy cost reduction is uh, really the icing on the cake and i think we sometimes need just to reverse our perspective on these investments and try to go for that um I have um, I have a, a, a real a real example which I can show you on the on the next slide. It's uh, the case of a large chain grocer, and uh, they have changed. They they were equipped. Their their um, their uh, shops were equipped with uh, incandescent spotlights, and uh, actually incandescent spotlights uh, emit infrared and uh, ultraviolet and this has a very strange effect of uh, changing the color of the meats and fit and fishes uh, disposed below and so it's changing the food appearance and uh, as a result uh, people don't want to buy this uh, this food uh, and i suppose this is not like that in all area in the world of course but uh, in uh, many uh, developed countries, people react like that, and um, and so and and there's another um, another negative impact of these uh, incand incandescent uh, lighting, and it's the food quality because uh, bacteria developed uh, 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 due to uh, due to the the heating. And so this uh, large chain grocer uh, has, uh, in, it's in Switzerland, they now, they are changing, they are currently changing these uh, incandescent uh, spotlights uh, with uh, LED lighting. And, uh, and uh, the result is that the, the food appearance is improving, the food quality is improving, the lighting quality as well, and the image also, but for them, what is, very important. It's not the energy savings, but the the, the reduction in product cost, which which were um, totalizing huge cost, and they are also decreasing, of course, maintenance cost and uh, and as I said, energy cost, and they are decreasing their commercial risk and their legal risk. And I think this is a very good example of what it is, how this investment is a highly uh, strategic investment. Um, but it is not strategic for um, uh, energy cost reductions. It is strategic because it helps to uh, less uh, losing in production and, uh, and, uh, and to decrease risks. If you want to apply this, uh, this uh, make it strategic approach, you, you should remember of certain uh, rules. Uh, uh, first, do not take into account energy cost reductions only, but all cost reduction. For instance, if you have a, a reduced uh, a level of breakdown in your company because you have changed uh, your equipment, uh, then you will have less cost because breakdown uh, involves high cost. A second rule is take into account not only cost reductions, but also a possible increase in sales, thanks to higher quantity sold and to a, a, a price premium. And uh, regarding risk reduction, they can often be translated into cost uh, reduction in quantitative terms. So you need to connect with financial people in a company and to, to, to ask for the, the, the figures, but very often you can find figures. Uh, if it's not possible to translate risk reduction into uh, into quantitative terms, then you can uh, make a qualitative analysis. Uh, of course, I've said that the, the financial logic is uh, less important than the strategic logic. Uh, actually, you have understood by now that the strategic logic does include the financial logic. Uh, it's, it doesn't exclude it, of course. And uh, strategic logic remains important. So uh, once identified, the strategic benefits of energy efficiency projects have to be translated into financial calculations. Uh, and this must be done including the non-energy benefits. And here you have a, a very standard uh, Excel spreadsheet to, with, with financial calculations based on the, the most common uh, financial, uh, financial rules. Uh, 
to to uh, assess uh, energy uh, to assess investment profitability and this is the second part of the financial uh, financial uh, spreadsheet uh, if you can't as i just said translate uh, uh, your your strate strategic uh, benefits and, and and your analysis into uh, quantitative terms, then you can perform a risk analysis. Uh, I'm sorry for the quality of the diagram here, but uh, anyways, just one one uh, one book, very well uh, done by a colleague of mine in uh, Geneva, uh, and uh, I think it's a Can Canadian uh, professor, and this is a, 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 a book uh, on uh, risk management where you can find very uh, applicable tools to perform risk analysis. So why you make it strategic approach uh, in summary, uh, you have to make it strategic because strategic investments win the competition. And this will be uh, done or this, your investment will become more strategic thanks to a positive impact. Uh, I mean, no, you will, you will buy, you buy in, uh, increasing your investment strategicity, you will, you will have a positive impact on the investment process and a positive impact on actors because you will raise a powerful department's interest and powerful champion. In conclusion, uh, it's, it's not only a conclusion, it's also some take-home messages. Uh, financial logic is not decisive. It's important, but not decisive. Strategic logic is more important in businesses' investment choices. Uh, the common engineer's technical economic approach uh, does not work or does not work sufficiently. Uh, it is useful to, to remember of this uh, theoretical uh, decision-making model because it's a, it's a good analytical tool to better identify the hindering and fostering factors influencing investment decision-making. Uh, and if you apply this uh, analytical tool to the usual decision-making process of uh, energy efficiency investments, what do you see? You see that uh, the, the, the characteristics of the energy efficiency investment, there is a low perceived strategic value, a low stimulus. Uh, it is unstructured, meaning you need to build up the solutions. And there's always a high end uncertainty because you, you cannot you can never be fully sure of the, the savings you, you reach at the end. Um, so there will be a poor diagnosis on, on this investment project at the beginning of the decision process because it is not labeled strategic. The decision makers, uh, the upper management will not be involved. And the investments will be championed by low power managers. And so this will result in a non-choice or a negative choice. So uh, this is why I, I advocate you to apply this uh, systemic, customized, and strategic approach. Each single approach is useful, even when applied alone. But of course, it is more powerful when used in combination with the others. Uh, customized and strategic approaches are useful whether you are inside a company. Uh, for instance, uh, as an energy manager, you want to sell energy efficiency projects internally. Or if you are outside a company, uh, for instance, in an ESCO, or if you are a public energy efficiency program to better understand which companies you want to, to, to target and, and how. Um, so make it strategic. The tool, uh, the analytical tool I have proposed here is capable of translating any technical investment project into strategic terms, uh, of bridging and unifying the languages of strategy and finance, and it uh, can be applied to any industry or company, ex ante or ex post, to better understand what happened. Uh, remember that it's important to, to, to bridge uh, to bridge uh, finance and strategic languages. Um, and so with a comprehensive analysis, you will build up the business case of energy efficiency investment projects. And uh, this will help to um, overcome the market barriers to energy efficiency. Uh, there's a huge literature on market barriers. 
uh, I have uh, somehow reorganized the concept, uh, saying that the base barrier is information, because if you do not know about a, uh, about a project, you will not start thinking about it. Then you have what I have labeled symptom barriers, so the hidden cost, the access to capital, uh, risk, all these factors mentioned by, by investors uh, explaining why they did not invest. But actually, the real barrier is the non-strategic character of an investment. But there's a hidden barrier, with what is the, which is the cultural dimension, because what is perceived as strategic by, by somebody will, will be not perceived as strategic by somebody else. And it's the same with companies because of these filters. But I think with the three approaches I've, I've uh, tried to briefly describe you, you may be uh, more um, equipped to, uh, to overcome these barriers. And uh, with that, I thank you very much for your attention. And I pass the floor to Hans.